Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In some of the previous tutorials, we tried learning how to develop a REST API which demands clients to make put kind of request on it. In other words, we learned how to develop this REST API controller method. And this REST API controller method seems absolutely perfect. There's no issue with this. When a client is going to make a put request on this REST API with the desired information with which it wants to update John's record, it's going to receive true as response body. So how it has received a true as response body? Well, the whole idea is whatever this REST API controller method is returning, this application simply puts that return value as a response body and sends the same to the client in the response message. And that's what we can observe over here, true as response body. Now, an interesting point which you should note down over here is this application not just only sends the response body in the response message, but along with the response body, it sends two more important information to the client. Response headers, you know, a bunch of key value pairs as well as response status code. So in the response message, application sends response body response headers as well as response status code because in this tutorial i'm going to only concentrate on status code as well as response body so you can ignore this tab fully for now so question is what this status code is all about because whatever status code an application sends in the response that informs client about what has happened while processing its request at the server was that request successfully processed by the application or while processing that request application somewhere failed in between so whatever has happened with that request while processing it at the server side that's what an application describes by sending an appropriate status code to the client so different status codes value convey different information to the client here I've listed some of the important status codes what an application might send to the client in different circumstances along with their meaning. So when an application sends status codes value as 200 OK to the client, it just indicates client that uh, the request what it made to the server was successfully processed there. So here for this request, I've received status codes value as 200. OK, it's simply indicating me that uh, whatever request I made that was successfully processed at the application. So the application has definitely updated John's record with this information. And how I'm so sure about this by looking at the status codes value. This is what 200. OK is conveying to me. Now, if here I would have got some other status code, then I would have understood something else, you know. So depending upon status code, a client may understand what actually has happened, you know, at the server while processing its request. Now, after knowing everything about status code, a question may arise in your minds. In this response message, we are getting response body and we are getting status code. And both of these are conveying same kind of information to me. It's not that after looking at status code, I would uh, be looking at you know response body or after looking at response body, I would be looking at status code because both are conveying the same kind of information, nothing special. Here, when I see true, I would understand that this must have been successfully processed at the server. When I see its value is false, I would understand that it must be failed somewhere at the server. And same is what the status code is conveying to me. So why to send two things in the response message, which is conveying same information to the client. So you can um, send either of these two, right? You can send either response body with such kind of information or status code with, you know, an appropriate value. And here, what important point you need to understand is 
in general, developers around the globe prefer sending status code for put kind of REST APIs than sending response body. So what they prefer is they do not send response body with such a kind of uh, you know method inside it. They prefer sending an appropriate status code which best describes the situation. So here if we go with the you know the generic way what developers follow around the globe we would also not return anything from this rest api controller method as response body so now here this is not setting as part of response body so now when i'm going to make a request i would not get anything as response body and i don't care for the same as well because whatever information I wanted to know, you know, related to my request, all that information is conveyed to me by this status code's value, which application is sending to me. So it's perfect now. So now when you have decided that you are going to only send an appropriate status code, you know, and uh, you are not going to send a response body, then another problem arises. Let me talk about that problem. The problem is, when you make a request and a request is being processed by this REST API controller method and let's say while processing it, it doesn't throw any error and it reaches till the end of this controller method and it comes out of this controller method. So in all such cases where REST API controller method process the request without throwing any exception in between and reaches to the end and comes out of the controller method application assumes that everything has gone right while processing that request within the rest api controller method and in all such cases it returns 200 ok as status code which sometimes you do not want to happen let me talk about an important case where you don't want application to send 200 ok Let's say you make a request and uh, here for this request, this statement is not able to find out John's record into the database. Now in this case, what it's going to do? Well, nothing special. It's not going to update John's record with this information. Why? Because it hasn't found John's record into the database. So in this case, it's going to happily come till the end of this controller method without throwing any exception and that is going to come out of this controller method and here also application is going to send 200 ok and that's something really wrong for such a case when application hasn't found john's according to the database it should not send 200 ok as status code value it should send some other appropriate status code which best describes the situation and this situation can be best described by sending the status code value as 404 not found. Well, 404 not found status code, if a client sees, then by looking at it, it can very clearly understand that uh, whatever students record it wanted to update with this information, well, that record is not available at the server. So sending an appropriate status code is very important, but point is if this is not going to throw any exception application is going to by default send 200 ok for all cases so how you can send an appropriate status code from within this rest api controller method depending upon whatever logic you have written inside it that's what is the question and the answer is by making use of something called as response entity return type all you need to do is you here specify response entity and return object of response entity and inside it just specify what status code you want to send so here let's say we want to send status code value as 200 okay so this is what i have to pass to it so now when I'm going to make a request, it's going to send me status code as 200 OK. All because of 
this value what I've passed to it. Now here, if I have to describe status code for the situation when it's not going to find John's record into the database, well, here all I need to do is to change it to not found. That's it. So in this case, this REST API controller method is going to send status codes value as 404 not found. See? So the whole idea is from within this REST API controller method, depending upon whatever logic you have written, you can actually choose an appropriate value of status code and send the same to the client. Here, just to keep this uh, tutorial a bit simpler, I am creating this response entity object in the end, you know, at this statement while I'm returning, you know, from this uh, controller method. But in your actual project, you got to write here many if else if kind of, uh, you know, statements and uh, in whatever if else if or else block you are, uh, you know, you are currently executing the code, you just got to prepare a response entity object, you know, in that block with an appropriate uh, status code and send the same, you know, back to the client from this controller method. All right. Now, one last important thing. Guys, what if uh, for any specific project requirement in real-time scenario, you decide to send response body as well, you know, in addition to status code, then how to achieve that using response entity? Well, that can be achieved very easily. Let's say you want to send here true value as a response body in addition to this status code. Let's say here you are sending status code as OK. And along with it, you want to send true value as response body. So this is the way to do that. The whole idea is when you pass only one argument to response entity object, then that argument is considered as response status to be sent to the client. And when you pass two arguments to response entity object, in that case, response entity is going to consider first argument as response body and second argument as response status. Now, another important point which you have to note down over here, whatever type of response body you are specifying here, you are passing here as an argument to response entity object, its type you have to specify over here. So here we are passing Boolean values. So here we are, we have to specify Boolean. So the concept is, whatever type of uh, response body we are passing here as first argument, you know, same type we have to specify here. So now after this chain, when I'm going to make a request, I would get response body as well as status, you know, whatever I've specified here. Because in this tutorial, we tried learning how to send response body as well as status code from within the REST API controller method. In the next tutorial, I will talk about how to send HTTP response headers along with response body as well as response status to the client. All right, guys, a big thank you for learning REST API concepts using Spring Embassy framework with me. If you have any feedback or any constructive comment, please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Gone2Series and I'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial.